This in front of me is one of the most powerful single board computers in the world right now. And I wish I loved it more than I do. Today's video is brought to you by me and the all new craftcomputing.store. There's no better way to help support the channel than by picking up a set of coasters, whiskey stones, rocks glasses, or any of the other accessories we have to help set up your own home bar. And it's all designed 100% in-house. Visit craftcomputing.store and start drinking like a pro. Cheers, everyone. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff. This is the Latte Panda Sigma. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff. This is the Latte Panda Sigma, and it is an absolute beast. While most single board computer manufacturers focus on things like low power draw or efficiency, the Sigma takes a slightly different approach, packing an Intel i5 1340p 12 core processor and 16 gigabytes of LPDDR5 dual channel memory. Those are specs that put it up in performance with most modern laptops, let alone the fact that Intel 13th generation mobile CPUs can dominate desktop chips from only a couple generations back. Of course, that also comes with an equally impressive price, with the Sigma starting at $579. This is quite the leap for Latte Panda, as all of their other SBCs have followed the tried and true pattern of slapping a 5 to 10 watt CPU onto a maker board and calling it a day. The first generation Latte Panda was an Intel Atom Z8350 Cherry Trail CPU. Gen 2 was a slightly faster N4100 Celeron, with the Latte Panda Delta third generation receiving an Intel N5105, just like every other x86 SBC on the market today. Now, to be fair, while ARM-based SBCs often have Direct Connect GPIO pins for maker projects, that type of expandability is very limited on x86 products. Latte Panda gets around this by attaching an ATmega 32U4 Arduino compatible coprocessor onto the same board, allowing you to have the performance benefits of x86 while not losing out on the GPIO side of things. But that brings us back to the Sigma, and its full spec sheet is staggering to say the least. Again, there's the 13th generation Intel Core i5-1340P featuring 12 cores and 16 threads, thanks to the 4 performance cores and 8 efficiency cores. Graphics are handled by the integrated Intel Iris Xe GPU with 80 execution units on its own. For video output, we've got a single HDMI 2.1 port capable of 4K at 60Hz. Both USB-C ports support Thunderbolt 4, but also support DisplayPort 1.4 with output of up to 8K at 60Hz. There's also a header for an eDisplayPort compatible panel, supporting up to 4K at 120Hz, along with touchscreen functionality. For storage, we've got a total of three M.2 slots, but since this is a mobile platform, of course all three of these slots are different and limited in their own way. Despite the i5-1340P supporting 20 PCI Express Gen 4 lanes, we have access to only four of them via the first M.2 slot. The second slot is still an X4, but it's limited to 3.0 speeds. And the third M.2 is a B key slot with dual personality SATA 3.0 or PCI Express 3.0 X1 connectivity. There's an additional 2230 M.2 E key slot that comes with an Intel AX200 Wi-Fi module backed by another PCI Express 3.0 X1 lane. Rounding out our storage and PCI Express options is a single SATA port alongside the GPIO header on the top of the motherboard. So despite having 20 PCI Express Gen 4 lanes available to the CPU, we get access to only four of them via a single M.2 X4 slot. The rest of the lanes are either connected through the chipset or pulled down to Gen 3 speeds or just frankly not available. There's no external expansion options for components like graphics cards, faster networking, and the like, which strikes me as a bit of an odd choice in a board marketed towards hackers, makers, tinkerers, and as I'll explain later on, potential system integrators. But of course, there's still more specs to cover before we get there. There's a smattering of USB ports with four type A's on the motherboard itself, as well as some standard PC headers for front IO and front panel audio. If you're looking for decently fast networking, there is a pair of Intel i225V 2.5 gigabit ethernet ports on here, but with that 1340p processor and a $600 price tag, this isn't exactly going to be marketed as a router. 
But now we get into what makes the Latte Panda Sigma not just a high powered single board computer, but a maker board and a hackable device. And that's the inclusion of the AT Mega 32U4 Arduino compatible microcontroller. As I mentioned, a major hurdle to adoption in the maker and OEM communities is the available of GPIO for interfacing with other hardware. And having full Arduino support built in certainly gives the Latte Panda a leg up when it comes to interacting with hardware and devices outside of the PC. It's how Latte Panda has designed their previous generation boards as well, but with those models being much more in line with other maker boards as far as horsepower is concerned, with Intel Atom and 5 watt Celeron CPUs on board. The integration of the AT Mega controller is unfortunately only power and serial connections to the PC hardware, so don't expect your Intel CPU to be ripping through your lines of instructions for an Arduino. You're still going to have the same memory and program length limitations, as well as processing speed as a standard Arduino, because this is still just a standard Arduino, it just shares a PCB with an x86 PC. But it's also this inclusion that I'm questioning most when considering the Latte Panda Sigma as a whole. Don't get me wrong, I think it's cool as hell to have Arduino support natively on an x86 board, but the package as a whole really makes me wonder who exactly this product is for. While Arduino itself is a very mature microcontroller architecture, it still has some pretty severe hardware limitations. The AT Mega 32U4 only has 32 kilobytes for program storage and a whopping 2,560 bytes of memory. While there's still countless projects that can be built with that, there's no inherent advantage to attaching an Arduino to a 12 core Intel CPU. One of the reasons the Raspberry Pi has taken much of the complex maker scene over the last decade is the GPIO is directly connected to the ARM CPU at the heart of the Pi. That means projects like robotics, machine vision, or machine learning can all run with the resources of the Raspberry Pi's CPU, like memory, storage, and compute power. It's a level of expandability that's just not possible on the Arduino microcontroller. The Latte Panda Sigma is being touted as a hackable single board computer, much like the Zima board or Zima Blade PCs that I've reviewed recently on the channel. Hackable as a marketing point is a bit of a misnomer, as by definition, hacking is using a device for something other than its intended purpose. The Sigma is a PC with standard PC expansion capabilities, plus an Arduino hanging off the side of it. So building off of it as a platform is kind of its intended purpose. While single board computers like the Zima Blade can be forgiven for their lack of expansion, see it only having a single PCI Express 2.0 X4 slot, the Zima Blade is a low power PC, so expectations of what you can actually do with the compute power at hand are significantly lower. What do you get by upgrading your project from an original Latte Panda Gen 1, 2, or 3, or even just a straight up Arduino to the Latte Panda Sigma? You get the same Arduino functionality, this time with a very powerful PC attached to it via RS-232 serial, and that's about it. Add in the fact that the PC portion of the Sigma isn't expandable outside of storage, and you seriously limit its potential uses as well. You've got 12 cores of Raptor-like CPU power at hand, but you can't attach a graphics card to create a super compact gaming rig. You can't add in a SATA controller to build a super compact NAS box. While you could install a couple of 8TB NVMe drives, you can't even upgrade the 2.5 gigabit networking ports to take advantage of that storage bandwidth externally. So while the Sigma is a blazingly fast single board computer, I'm not seeing it as being very hackable at all. Speaking of performance, the PC half of the Sigma is still a massive step forward in maker-oriented SBCs. Rather than a Celeron N5105 or a multi-generations-old ARM A76 core, we get a full Intel Core i5-1340P with 12 cores and 16 threads. Of course, that also comes with a massively inflated TDP and power draw, with the CPU alone able to pull 45 watts of power. But for those looking for performance, the Sigma delivers it in spades. But I've also got some grievances to air here too, and we'll start on the CPU side of things. The four performance cores on the 1340p will boost to 4.6 gigahertz straight out of the box, and the eight efficiency cores aren't exactly trailing far behind. But performance in standardized tests are easy to reproduce and verify, which is why the reported Cinebench R23 score on Latte Panda's website is so baffling to me. It claims the Sigma with the i5-1340p can hit a multi-threaded score of 12,000. 
But that's just a result that I was not able to reproduce. In fact, I can't find a single other media outlet testing this same CPU that's able to hit that score either. My fastest multi-threaded test managed just 10,577, a full 12% slower than the score claimed by Latte Panda. Notebookcheck.com has scores ranging from 10,600 to 10,921 for the same CPU in various laptop models. Similarly, Nano Review lists a score of 10,708, TopCPU.net a 10,588, Gadget versus a 10,944. In fact, the fastest test that I was able to find was 11,181. All of us agree that performance of the 1340p sits in a range of roughly 500 points, well below Latte Panda's claim of 12,000. Don't get me wrong, the 1340p is still lightning fast, but I just don't understand misrepresenting performance like this. Like the CPU, graphics also received a huge shot in the arm thanks to the integrated Intel XE processor with 80 compute units. Because of this, we get not only H.264, X.265 video decoding, but encoding too thanks to Intel QuickSync. So if you wanted the world's dumbest NVMe-based Plex server, this would certainly do the job. But my problem here is that the Intel XE is a dead product and doesn't share a single piece of DNA with Intel's new Alchemist-based GPUs. Think the A750 or A770. While Alchemist is likely coming to mobile CPUs in tile form in the next generation, it's not here now in the i5-1340p, and performance is honestly a letdown when looking around at other platforms that are out on the market today. To be clear, this is more of a problem with Intel as a platform, as this decision is very far removed from Latte Panda. They can't exactly include parts in the Sigma that don't exist yet. But the truth is that Intel's XE graphics barely beat out AMD's Vega from 2018, and still get beat by Nvidia's 1050 mobile chip from the same year. Latte Panda offers a single benchmark result for the Intel XE graphics, a graphics score from 3DMark's DirectX 12 benchmark, TimeSpy, in which Sigma manages a 1466. I was able to back up that result with my review sample scoring a 1485, so at least we're in agreement on this one. But given the Sigma's price tag of $579 for the PC itself, 16 gigabytes of LPDDR5, and no storage, it's natural to start looking at devices with similar price points and start comparing. Ryzen-powered handheld gaming PCs, laptops, and even mini PCs equipped with the 7840U and Radeon 780M graphics are able to hit graphics scores of 2577, or around 75% faster. That kind of horsepower lets these systems play modern AAA games at 1080p low settings at 60 FPS. You can check out my review of the One X Fly if you want to see some more performance testing with this combo. Even many PCs equipped with the Ryzen 6800U from the previous generation start at about $399 for a similar form factor mini PC, and that one will also obliterate the Intel XE graphics chip. So if you're looking for a gaming system to hack together into some kind of mini console, this ain't it, bro. Unfortunately, the Intel XE and the Sigma just aren't able to compete when it comes to gaming or graphics, so you can forget about hacking together into a mini console or a home theater PC. And given we've already talked about the lack of expansion options when it comes to graphics cards, you're going to be stuck with whatever's in here. So we've got a single board computer priced at $579 that has a lightning fast CPU, a woefully underperforming GPU for anything but basic display or video encoding, no enclosure, so you have to either build one or buy one yourself, no expandability, and an Arduino microcontroller built in. My gut still wants to say this seems like a decent system for the money, and there might just be a buyer with a very specific set of needs out there that the Latte Panda Sigma will fill. But as I referenced a couple paragraphs ago, I then started shopping around, and I remembered another little hacker-friendly OEM that also makes single board computers with an Intel i5-1340P, but theirs sell at only $449. So where exactly can you find this mythical product? Head on over to Framework Laptops. That's right, the plucky little right-to-repair friendly OEM will sell you a logic board, complete with an Intel 1340p, a heatsink, and a fan, for a full $130 less than the Latte Panda Sigma. Now, while the framework has a few less ports and no Arduino built in, there are still some advantages here. There are four USB-C ports, DIMM slots for memory expansion up to 128 gigabytes, and with the money saved, you can buy an Arduino 32U4 for the exact same functionality as the Sigma. 
I really, really wanted to like and recommend the Sigma, and I had a number of projects I thought would be perfect fits for a system of this caliber. But in the end, an Arduino isn't nearly enough to justify the nearly $600 price tag that's attached to it. And while the PC side of the equation does have a top flight CPU, it also lacks any real expansion options to make it make sense in projects. You just can't connect a storage controller or a graphics card and create a system that's better than the sum of its parts. It is the PC that it's always going to be, which is the exact opposite of what Latte Panda wanted the Sigma to be. But that's not to say I don't think there's any use for the Sigma at all. Rather than the maker community, I feel the Sigma is much more suited to industrial use or for integration into machinery to augment other features with high-end compute. The Arduino means the PC can have sensors, servos, motors, etc. to interact with the real world. And the PC side of things means it could have the compute power to add in machine vision, AI, or other power-heavy tasks. CNC machines, industrial robots, manufacturing, these are all industries that will likely benefit from a device like this. And there's nothing wrong with that. But when it comes to makers, I feel there are dozens of other options out there already that fill the need the Sigma is trying to hit. Overall, the Latte Panda Sigma feels like a product without an identity. While its individual components are all top notch, this feels like a product that is somehow less than the sum of its parts, and for a higher price than if you'd bought all those individual parts on their own. While I want to love it, the Sigma just feels like a miss to me. But what do I know? Leave me a comment down below, as I'd love to know if you have any projects or ideas that the Sigma would fit into, especially if there currently aren't any other products on the market already filling those criteria. Mainly because I'd love to be proven wrong. On your way down there, make sure to drop this video a like and subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. And if you're interested in the Latte Panda Sigma, I will have a link down in the video description on where you can find one. Follow me on the social medias at Craft Computing for daily shenanigans like this. And if you like the content you see on this channel and want to help support me in what I do, there are a couple ways you can do that. First off, head on over to craftcomputing.store, grab yourself one of our phenomenal pint glasses, coasters, or other drink and barware goods to start drinking like a pro, or head on over to the Patreon, where you'll get exclusive access to my Discord server. That's going to do for me in this one. Thank you all so much for watching, and as always, I will see you in the next video. Cheers, everyone. Beer for today is a non-alcoholic beer from Athletic Brewing. It is the first ride. Uh, this is a non-alcoholic malt beverage with coffee. So very interested to see what this one is like. Holy crap, that's dark. Now, I've had a number of Athletic Brewing beers before, but if you're not familiar with Athletic Brewing, they make alcohol-free beers. They make ABV-free beers or less than 0.5% alcohol by volume. Normally, they're trying to emulate different styles of beers. So they've got Pilsners and IPAs and lagers and stouts and the like. This one is a little weird because it's almost like they're coming after Pabst Blue Ribbon Coffee or some of the, the Nitro Brew coffees that are out on the market right now. Um... I gotta say, it's not a bad coffee. I I'm actually genuinely impressed with uh, with how robust the flavor is and how well balanced it is with a little bit of that, that ale-like flavor. It's a very light roast. It's not creamy at all. It's not overly thick. There's definitely no, no uh, super rich or dark flavors in here. So while not directly emulating a beer flavor, it's still a pretty good, balanced cold brew coffee drink. I like this one.